gods. Yay! Hello, everyone. Good day. In this video, me and Precious will discuss an important discussion about ethnographic methods that we, aspiring linguists, should learn. So, ethnographic methods are research approaches where you look at people in their cultural setting with the goal of producing a narrative account of that particular culture against a theoretical backdrop. In this case, this topic aims to present a critical review of the more common data collection techniques and analytical procedures currently practiced by professional linguistic anthropologists. Linguistic anthropologists use traditional ethnographic methods such as particular observation, where the researcher is immersed in the day-to-day -day activities of the participants, which will be discussed later, and work with native speakers to obtain spontaneous interaction of the community communicative material they aim to record. However, as we enter this new technological era, it is imperative to develop empirical research in which to examine the pros and cons of the new tools within a general discussion of methodology for the study of human communicative behavior as well as to achieve effective quality research. Now, before we proceed to the next discussion, first, we must identify the difference between linguist, anthropologist, ethnographers, and linguistic anthropologists to avoid confusion because I was able I was also confused at first. <laughs> so linguists are interested in language as a descriptive force. It doesn't mean that you need to be a polyglot or have the ability to master different languages. However, we believe that people's language reflects and is influenced by their culture, history, age, and other demographic forces. Anthropologists they study the origin, development, and behavior of humans. They are concerned with examining the cultures, languages, archaeological remains, and physical characteristics of people in various parts of the world. Next, we have the ethnographers. So they are the persons that study and describe the culture of a particular society or group. Now we have the linguistic anthropologists. So they study the nature of human languages in the context of this culture of the of those cultures that developed them. They examine the ways in which language provides insights into the nature and evolution of culture and human society. In this case, they aim to analyze how language shapes cultures, like in geography and politics. Now, precious, the floor is all yours. Hi, good morning everyone. Now let us proceed and define ethnography. The ethnography is a scientific description of the customs of individual peoples in culture. It is also the written description of the social organization, social activities, symbolic and material resources, and interpretive practices characteristics of a particular group of people. It is also a qualitative method for quality. Uh, collecting data often used in the social and behavioral sciences. And when studying a group of people or studying people in communities, it is not only observing particular community in a distant and safe point, but by being in the middle of things. That is by participating in as many social events as possible. This is necessary combination of modalities of being with others and observing them that is referred to as participant observation, a building stone of anthropology's contribution to our understanding of human cultures. And when studying um, people and communities, there is an initial assumption that the people studied form a community must be sustained by systematic observation. This means that ethnographers expect to find certain commonalities among the members of the group, a certain shared or mutually intelligible habits, social activities, ways of interacting and interpreting social acts. And lastly, the ethnographic 
account will try to describe not only how a particular group of people are kept together by their similarities, but also how they are united despite or on account of their differences. And did you know that Ethnographers are also referred to as cultural mediators because just like cultural mediators, they provide information on different sets of value, orientations to life, belief assumptions, and social cultural conventions by clarifying culture-specific expression and concept that might give rise to misunderstanding. It is because ethnographers conduct empirical research by immersing in local settings, establishing good rapport and using qualitative methods such as participant observation and open interviews. However, according to Malinowski and tradition, the ethnographer is portrayed as a novice, treated by the native as a grown-up child who still needs attending as well as constant reminding of what is appropriate and what is inappropriate in any given situation. However, the view of the ethnographer as the child novice in Durbanti's book is inaccurate because ethnographers are professional adults who usually come from powerful foreign nation and institutions that have economic and military superiority over the people they are studying. And that ends my report. Let us proceed and have Ms. Lamarda. So thank you, Ms. Precious. Now there are two kinds of field linguistics. So linguistic anthropologists and most linguists have some important differences in the ways they work in the field. Linguistic anthropologists are not the only ones to travel long distances to go and live within a community of speakers with the goal of describing their language. Linguists have been doing it for a long time as well. For instance, remember when Sir Saj discusses his experience from the state of Taosog and Sama Bajo linguistics, where they did field works to collect, record and file data to conduct research among the Manobos. And he was able to share how he travels long distances for research purposes. So it's not only applicable to the linguistic anthropologists. So for linguists, they are most interested in grammar. The reason to travel to a distant location and live within a community of speakers is usually to have the luxury of virtually unlimited access to speakers of different ages, gender, and social status, who can provide a much more reliable and varied database than the one produced by meeting with one or two native speakers in research. Because, you know, as Mom Robles said, exposure is very important to access the language of a particular culture. Next, uh, no. Linguistic anthropologists, on the other hand, are quite different compared to linguists. They make extensive audio and video recordings of everyday encounters. These forms of documentation are complemented by participant observation and a number of related field techniques for the study of verbal performance, including ethnographic notes, drawings, maps, interviews, and even phot photography. But usually, linguistic anthropologists opt for video recording in particular because audio recording is insufficient to capture the scope of semiotic resources such as the facial expression, gesture, body orientation, and so on, brought to bear in even a few seconds of discourse. There are substantial cultural differences in how people use body language to communicate. As researchers, it is important for us to scrutinize every detail and to include the gestures of the participants because this gives an emphasis to our study. Next slide, please. Oh. So, for the participant observation, there are different modes of participant observation. We have passive participation, where ethnographers try not to interfere with participants as much as possible. And we have complete participation, in which researchers intensively interact with other participants and might even get to participate in and perform the very activity they are studying. Next slide, please. 
So in the case of linguistic fieldwork, complete participation means being able to interact competently in the native language and even perform the verbal genres one is studying. This might not necessarily to be a voluntary choice by the researcher. Remember when Sir Saj was conducting the research, but before he was able to do so, the IP groups must perform a ritual, an acceptance ritual. I forgot the details, but somehow once you have been given an acceptance ritual, you are part of the family, even if you don't belong to any of the tribes. If you're not given a ritual, you cannot commune with the tribe. Hence, you cannot also conduct your research. As a researcher, Sir Saj was able to particip participate in that ritual. So complete participation, when possible and ethically appropriate, gives researchers a great opportunity to experience the very processes they are trying to document directly, though it is by no means equivalent to entering the mind and body of a native speaker because it's impossible. So performing gives a researcher important insights into what it means to be a participant in a given situation and suggests hypotheses and further questions. Next slide, please. So for writing interaction, although according to Gertz, although writing is not the only thing that an ethnographer does, there is no ethnography without writing. So one of the distinguishing features of linguistic anthropologies is the reliance on recording machines, especially tape recorders and camcorders. These are video cameras that can also play back the recorder, recorded tape. These are te the technologies that can be conveniently used to capture and analyze spontaneous interactions. So the concept of writing interaction presents problems from the very start. Regardless of how good we are as writers, we know that if our goal is to have the most accurate record of a given interaction, writing can be a very poor technology for describing the richness of the experience of either being in an event or witnessing it as an observer. Like in this era, where technology is a vital component, there is no question, for instance, that a good quality video recording or a film with the soundtrack of an event is going to have a lot more information than a written description of it. However, at the same time, it is also true that we cannot make visual and sound records of everything for a variety of reasons that include ethical as well as economic, practical, and even theoretical considerations. Even if we could approximate such a total audiovisual documentation, it will never still be the same as the experience of being there. Having the audio and video recordings are not enough if we are not in the fieldwork. This would miss the opportunity for us to feel the experience while gathering information with the participants. Next slide, please. So for the electronic recording, the introduction of recording mach machines such as tape recorder and the video camera or the camcorder, uh, which is among the field researchers tools, has a number of advantages over the traditional method of participant observation based on the researcher's skills at listening, seeing, and most importantly, remembering whether or not aided by written notes. The ability to stop the flow of discourse or the flow of body of movement, we can go back to a particular spot and replay it allows us to concentrate on what is sometimes a very small detail at the time, including a particular sound of, or a person's small gesture. Next slide, please. So tips in audio and Tips in audio and video re recordings. So a very basic form of note taking, which turns out to be a very helpful, is the writing of the date of the recording and the names of the participants on the tape label. label. Like the bar, even if we are recording our performance tasks, we always put labels so we do not get confused of the number of recordings, like final one, Marian Madeja, or Interview one, baby Marjorie Gunnern. So for audio tapes, the researcher can give information about the situation to the microphone before starting the record. And for video tapes, the date and time can be displayed either throughout the recording or at the beginning and after any cut or interruption. So what's the reason for labeling these recordings? 
So this will help us not to get complacent because a camera generally records interaction over short periods of time and interruptions and cuts are inevitable. So thus, it's better to be organized than nothing, right? Next now, Kuya. Ah, dugayas the delay. Oh, there I am. So, does the presence of a camera affect the interaction? Despite the enormous advantage of the presence of a camera in an interaction, however, we can't deny the fact that it can heighten concerns in relation to ethics and anonymity. For instance, how will participants' experience of being recorded affect them? So how will the organization and people's anonymity and privacy be maintained? So this concern needs to be discussed and possible solution agreed to ameliorate them in a balanced way that does not jeopardize the participants' well-being or different stages of the proposed research from data collection to presentation and publication. So in order to solve this problem, it is important to ensure that video is the best data collection tool for a project. There are some research contexts and sites where it may not be possible, feasible, or ethical to use video, or the type of data video can collect may not align with the research question to be addressed. Once the informed decision has been made to use the researcher, the researcher needs to convince. Ah, well, let go. It is important to ensure that video is the best data collection tool for a project. There are some research contexts and sites where it may not be possible, feasible, or ethical to use video. Once the informed decision has been made to use video, the researcher needs to convince those who they wish to research that the use of video is appropriate and it will not cause any harm to participants and organizations involved. Negotiating access to conduct research with a group of people in an organization or a site is an important part of any research. It is a moment where the needs of the participants, their concerns and rights, as well as those of the researcher can be explored to support productive research relationship and experiences. So that's all. So in conclusion, um, linguistic anthropologists use technology like videotapes and microphones for data gathering. It is evident how these technologies could give us the access to better quality for recording an interview. One should free to use what seems to work for one's goals. Experimenting with new techniques such as the use of video and computers can provide insights and reveal phenomena that had been previously ignored or left unanalyzed. At the same time, new technologies also bring new ethical and political, political problems because nothing's perfect. <laughs> and problems are really inevitable. So as researchers, it is our responsibility to be knowledgeable about the issue, which will give us the awareness of the pros and cons of new methods of documentation while developing a critical understanding of the pros and cons of pros and cons of the traditional methods. So with those being said, having the I mean, I mean, having awareness will help us apply the best method in a certain situation, which could also avoid future problems. So for researchers, we don't just settle for less. <laughs> so now for the references, most of the information was uh, were taken from these knowledgeable and these four knowledgeable authors. So we have Durante, the author of Linguistic Anthropology. This book is the main, main source of my lecture and I like the way that it is comprehensive and it highlights the details of the information based from Durante's experience. Next, we have Jewett, um, the author of National Center for Research Methods Working Paper. She also highlighted the solution of avoiding the ethical problems um, with regard uh, to using cameras in data gathering. We also have Marfil with her experience in doing fieldwork report on the Mansaka of Davao. She gave me an idea uh, of how to communicate with the Mansaka tribe in an ethical and appropriate way. So finally, we have Rakomabi and her understanding hand and body 
gestures across cultures. Um, this highlights the importance of studying the, semi the semiotic resources in doing research. So, and that concludes my lecture. Thank you so much, everyone, especially, especially to Sir Saj. I hope that you have learned something today. Bye-bye!